deepening our faith. It's a time when we enter into the desert getting back to know Jesus this whole time, getting to know him in a deeper way. Some of us may think that we don't need to make that much of an effort during Lent to deepen our faith because we already know Jesus. We've been practicing our faith for years, maybe even decades. It's not much more to know. However, in today's gospel, we hear of the Pharisees who had dedicated their whole lives to learning about the law and practicing their Jewish faith to the letter, to the letter. Yet, their pride blinded them from realizing who Jesus was. Their pride blinded them. In fact, it took a man born blind to open their eyes to consider who Jesus was. It's quite ironic when you think about it. Maybe we too can learn something from this man who was born blind. Allow him, his experience, to open our eyes to realize in a deeper way who Jesus Christ truly is. I'd like to look at two different lessons from today's gospel that we can draw out from the reading. The first is that Jesus wants to heal us. Jesus wants to heal us. But you and I need to let him heal us. We have to give him that permission to heal us. The second lesson I want to look at is that growing in faith, if we are to grow in our faith, we need to have courage and perseverance. We need to have courage and perseverance. And we'll see that in the experience of the blind man. So let's look at the first lesson. The first lesson, Jesus wants to heal us, but we need to give him that permission to heal us. Something worth noticing from today's gospel is that Jesus never asked permission from this blind man to put mud on his eyes. He just spit on the ground, made mud with his saliva and the dirt, and then rubbed it in the man's eyes. Didn't ask him, this is what I'm going to do, do you mind if I do that? No, he just did it. He just did it. In other miraculous healings, you see people go to Jesus asking him, Please heal us. You see people bringing other sick people to Jesus asking for healing. You see people, you see Jesus asking them, what do you want from me? What would you like me to do? Not in this case. Jesus saw the blind man's need. It was obvious. And then through this gesture, he healed him. Jesus wants to make you and I whole. And sometimes we think that we're already whole. But that is the blindness of our pride getting in the way. Jesus wants to heal us of anything that is not good in our lives. But the catch is we need to give him that permission to act in these areas. Not to push him away when he reaches to heal us. Not to hide our wounds or pretend they're not there. To allow his healing hands to go and to touch us. Notice how the blind man did not resist Jesus' gesture of putting mud in his eyes. Rather, he was docile. He surrendered himself to the hand of God, touching his most sensitive wound, his eyes. Imagine if Jesus tried to do that to you or I. We'd probably jump back and say, what are you doing? Or, ow, that hurts. Or, it stings. This man didn't know who Jesus was. He had no idea who Jesus was. Nor could he tell if that gesture was one of love or one maybe of ridicule or of cruel gesture. Think of uh, kids teasing each other or something like that. Or let's pick on the blind man today. He can't fight back. He doesn't know who hit him or who threw the snowball or whatever it is. The blind man didn't know if Jesus' gesture was one of love or one of ridicule or a cruel gesture. Most of us would cringe at the thought of soap or shampoo falling in our eyes, let alone mud. That is, if you still use shampoo. (laughs) Just seeing if you're awake. But just imagine if that mud and that coarse dirt touched our eyes. How that would have felt and how to have that faith and trust that what is happening in this moment is okay to let it continue rather than to push the person away. And surely the command of Jesus to go and wash his eyes would not have an effect in the blind man. Washing your eyes does not cure blindness. It doesn't make sense. But the blind man's surrender to this gesture is a powerful lesson for us. The blind man teaches us to give God permission, to give Jesus permission 
to act in our lives, to put his healing hand into our most painful memories, our most painful experiences in life, our deepest problems that are leading to stress and anxiety, and to allow him to go into those wounds to heal them. But how often do we hide those wounds from God's healing hand? How often do we neglect to bring them to prayer, bring them to Mass as something that we offer during the prayers of the faithful, asking the Lord, please help me in whatever it is that, this, that I'm struggling with or going through? How often do we pull away when the mud, of our, mud touches our eyes and we prevent God from healing us? Rejecting those first few steps of healing needed. How often do we avoid the change in our lives because we think it's uncomfortable or difficult or painful to grow through, yet it is ultimately for our good and to heal our blindness or whatever it is that is our wound. My friends, this may be like the discomfort the, man, the blind man felt when the mud was being rubbed into his eyes. And he had to make his way to the pool of Siloam to wash. That uncomfortable experience, that's what it it would be to avoid Jesus' healing hands. We need to go through those if we are to regain our sight. Examples of this in our lives could be seeking forgiveness from someone that we may have hurt in the past. Swallowing our pride and going to them and asking for forgiveness. Or... There is choosing to forgive someone else who has offended us deeply and that we are holding on to this. Going to the sacrament of confession may be something you dread, something that you have avoided for years. I'm telling you, let the mud of healing touch your eyes when you go to the sacrament of confession. Let Give God the permission by walking into the confessional and saying, heal these wounds, Lord. I'm sorry for this, this, and this. And the Lord will wash you way better than the pool of Siloam in his mercy and his love and forgiveness. Freeing you from any of the anxiety, the guilt, the shame that you're walking around bringing with you each and every day. Take the time to pray every day or to read from the New Testament. You may think you don't have the time. You may find that sitting in silence alone with God is painful, boring. I don't really know what's happening right now. You don't know what to say. You don't hear God's voice speaking to you directly. You may even think this is a waste of time and throw the book onto the nightstand and never do it again. But I promise that your relationship with Jesus Christ will grow exponentially, not just a little bit, exponentially if you stick it out for just a few minutes every single day. First lesson, Jesus wants to heal us, to make us whole, but we need to give him the permission and the opportunity to do so. The second lesson, growing in faith requires courage and perseverance. Growing in faith requires courage and perseverance. Now, today's gospel, this journey of the blind man's conversion may seem quick. It all really happened when you look, think of it in maybe a day or two. From never having met Jesus before to the end of our gospel, Later that day or the next day, calling Jesus Lord and worshiping Him. What a huge transformation in such a short period of time. While we may think that it was a miraculous conversion, just like there was a miraculous healing, we need to stop and look at the roller coaster that this blind man, this healed man experienced in that short period of time. A real test of his faith. It required great courage, great perseverance to get him to the point where he was able to worship the Lord, to call him Lord. When he first met Jesus, the blind man had never seen him. Of course, he was blind. He had never spoken to him in the past. There was no conversation, no introductions. Hi, my name is Jesus. I'm from Nazareth. This is what I do. No, it wasn't like that. Jesus just got the mud and rubbed it in his eyes without telling the man what was going to happen, what he was doing, and then he told him to go wash. That was the extent of the interaction. Once the man was healed, though, he was doubted by his neighbors and those who knew him. They were so angry, they brought him before the Pharisees to be questioned, even punished, for causing a stir on the Sabbath. 
When he was asked, how were you healed? He simply referred, it was the man named Jesus. The Pharisees then put some serious pressure, put some serious heat on him, on the man bringing his parents in. Imagine that, being brought before this mock trial for the Pharisees, and they bring your parents to witness this. They use the power of their authority to intimidate him and his family, to reject what had happened, to deny what had happened. The man's parents feared so much for their lives in this mock trial that they abandoned their son. The parents abandoned their son to stand alone. And then they pressured the son on the topic of Jesus' identity. Remember how quick the interaction was. It would be so much easier to just deny it. I don't know who he was. I actually was never really blind. It was just an act. That would have gotten him out of this mock trial or any possible punishments that would have flowed from it. But no, he stuck it out. And he answered the fundamental question of faith when they asked him, Who is Jesus? When the man said Jesus must be a prophet, the Pharisees kicked him out of the synagogue. Imagine that. This is the place of worship. It's the center of the Jewish community. You're getting kicked out of the community just by that answer. This man endured tremendous adversity in his journey of faith, which was just, again, a short, several few hours. He was denied and persecuted by his neighbors and friends. His parents abandoned him. He was insulted and threatened by the Jewish authorities and finally kicked out of the whole Jewish community for believing Jesus was sent by God. This wasn't an easy conversion. This wasn't an easy experience of faith. This man went through quite the roller coaster. In fact, he lost everything after that experience. If we are to truly live our faith, we must have the courage and we must be prepared to persevere when challenged by others, when questioned by others, when mocked or ridiculed by others. When we are questioned, persecuted, hated, even ostracized from our friendships, from our workplace, from our family, we will be tested. We could be tested. You may already have been tested in this way, in the questions of your faith. Because you and I, as baptized Christians, are called to witness to our faith, to describe to other people who ask, who is Jesus Christ, and to have an answer. As witnesses, we must continue to tell the world who Jesus Christ is. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is the Word of God made flesh who dwelt among us. He is the merciful God who welcomes us back every single time that we fall. He is the Good Shepherd who lays down His life for His sheep. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He is Jesus of Nazareth, my Lord and my God. Brothers and sisters, let us pray today for the courage and the perseverance we need, just like the man born blind, to live our faith courageously so that we may continue to grow in our faith, so that we may witness to our faith in anticipation of the wonderful day when we will see Jesus face to face, when we will call him Lord, and we will worship him for all eternity in paradise.